Well hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're starting a three part video set. Part one is today. The full video set is going to be to do with the dashboard, dashboard removal and dashboard um, overhaul, repair um, and basically making it all look new again. So in part one which is today, we're going to purely talk about removal of the climate control display. The reason I've decided to cover this specifically is a number of you have sent these to me uh, for repair and when they've arrived the top bracket's been broken. Now there's two reasons this has happened. One is because they're getting old now and the plastic's becoming brittle and secondly because people have tried to remove it without knowing the proper process and they've forced the thing and broke it. So I'm going to show you the proper way to remove these today without breaking them. Um, at the end of this video we'll end it and we'll leave it at that point and then in part two we'll talk about full dashboard removal in order to make it all look like new again. So in order to remove just the climate control display you're going to need the following tools. First of all a Phillips screwdriver ideally with a long body because there's going to be a few screws that are in quite hard to get spaces right in the back of the dashboard this will make things a lot easier. If you've got one with a magnetic tip, that will make things even better because it's nothing worse than dropping a screw right in the bells of your car and having to strip half the car down to get those screws out. The second thing is a shorter bodied screwdriver with a Phillips tip. This is for those little tight spots where you can't get the long screwdriver into. The next one is a small flat headed screwdriver. Now, you're pr purely going to be using this to pry out something. So it doesn't have to be a screwdriver. It can be a, a strong tipped metal um, blade of any sort that will allow you to pry something out. Next one is a couple of uh, normal plastic trim tools. Again, these are going to be to get out little plastic parts that you need to pry out. A small torch is going to be useful. There's a few little dark spots in there that are going to make it difficult for you to see. So if you've got some sort of small uh, torch um, that will allow you to see in those small spots, that would be great. And finally, some matches. Now this seems a bit strange. You'll see during the video what it's for. You may choose to use something different. But bear in mind that these videos are for absolutely everyone, no matter what level of uh, expertise you've got and what tools you've got. So if you're a professional you may choose something different but the DIY person at home may not have the right tools and matches will suffice. So let's, uh, oh sorry before I move on I just want to explain to you I've removed the uh, seat in this car. The only reason the seat has been removed is to aid the video making. You do not need to remove the seat at all for any of these videos. Um, and finally, I should say that what we're about to do is the same for left and right hand drive vehicles of any year and any model that has this type of display. So let's move on with the video. OK, guys, so we're inside the car now. Now, you can do this job from either side of the car. I've chosen to do it from this side purely so someone can video from that side. We're going to start with the hardest and most complicated part of the job. What we need to do is get at the top screw on the heater display and in order to do that we need to remove these vents here. Now I have checked the original factory manual and it does show you a technique but I have tried it a number of times and found it quite difficult. So I found a different way that works well for me. You may want to try this way or you could refer to the manual and try it the way the manual says. So in order to get this unit out you need to remove these two little uh, rotating vents here. Now what works best for me is to use a plastic trim tool, slide that into the gap there to give you a bigger gap. Then you use your little prying tool and just gently lever that forward. And that's one out. Now we repeat the process for the other side. Do it from this side because there's not much movement on that side. Again, get your trim tool in there as much as possible to create a gap. And then lever and pry forward. And that's your second one out. Now from this point, 
you can see why we're going to need the matches. If you look into this hole here, you're going to see, I'm going to get a little torch here for you to help you. You will see here a little clip. Now there's four of these, one here, one directly above, one on this side, and one directly above. You need to bring together all four clips simultaneously. Now, once again, I don't have that many hands. So in order to complete this job on my own, I'm going to make use of the matches. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift this up as far as it'll go. Then I'm going to wedge a match in there to hold it up for me. I'll repeat the process on this side. And now I'll use the two plastic uh, trim tools. We're going to wedge one up the top here while pulling on the uh, vent and one up the top here and we should be able to get it to come forward. Remove your trim tool and take this unit out. Now the unit is connected by a single wire. To disconnect the wire you press down on this tag here and then pull. So that's the first part done. We'll put that to one side for now. Now this is the point where you can see the screw that everyone misses. And I'd strongly recommend that you take that screw out now because when you get to the pot bottom part of the job there's going to be a lot of uh, manoeuvring around and I don't want to risk breaking that. So we'll take that screw out now. and put all your screws somewhere nice and safe where you're not going to lose them. So now that's the top part completed, for the next part we need to remove the radio. Now sometimes you can get, just get a trim tool behind here and that'll lever out quite easily. But uh, that doesn't always work. So I prefer to use a little hook tool um, of some description. This will enable you to get at this much easier. Now if you look on each side there's usually one side that's got a slightly bigger gap. And what you need to do is get your tool into the gap, twist it slightly, and then pull on the front. And then do the same on the other side now, you should have a slightly better gap. If you can't get at it from the other side, as with this one, because it's too tight, just go along the front and gently just work that out. Do not force anything because you risk doing damage. And then the same for the bottom. And now this is out, you can see how it's held in. We've got a couple of just gently springy clips here. And at the bottom should be two tags, but one of them's broken off with age. Um, so don't worry about that, it still goes back in fine. Put that to one side, somewhere safe. And now we look at the radio removal. This is a nice simple process. We've got two screws on each side of the radio. And for those, you're just going to use your regular screwdriver. Now, when you remove your last screw, the uh, radio's going to drop. It's quite a heavy beast that's fitted to these things. So just be prepared for it. Watch you don't trap your fingers in there when it falls. Oh, this one didn't drop. That's good. So now, gently pull it forward to gain access. And on the back, we've got some wiring. Now, this is a little bit tight in here. If you manoeuvre stuff around, it will help. Uh, you can see someone's got at this wiring in the past. This is my demonstration car, so it's uh, got all sorts of problems. Now, all these uh, cables come out exactly the same as the one that I showed you earlier. You've got a little tag that you have to push in. Once that's pushed in, the plug will un undo. Undo. 
and of course your antenna cable. And now you put your radio to one side, somewhere safe. Put all your cables out the way. Now we move on to the next section. For the next part of this uh, video, it's easier to remove these. So they literally just pull forwards, just gently, bit at a time. Again, the little spring clips on there, that's all that's holding them in. Same on the other side, just unclip them. And also, if you reach up underneath, you'll see there's a cable here. I'm going to get the torch for you again. Now that cable has three wires coming out of it, and those three wires go to the heater controller box. Now, if you're pretty good at working blind, you can reach up at this point and unplug those three cables. If you're not, you can wait until further into the video when I'll show you how to do them um, another way. So we'll turn that off for now. So the next part of the video is removal of this controller box up under here. You can feel it, but I can't show you it very well. Now on each side of that controller box is two screws. I'm going to cut the video at this point and just go and get a controller box so you know what you're looking for. So I've just been and got one of the controller boxes. This is so you can see what it is that you're looking for. And you can see on each side where the screws are. Two on each side. And you'll find it's mounted this way up. So those are the three cables I told you about, plugged into the back of it. And it's mounted this way around inside. Now, some people try to get at those screws from underneath. And that is possible to do. However, it's very, very difficult. So I'm going to show you a way to get those screws out much easier. So for now, I'll put this down. And now you need a screwdriver, ideally with a long body, because it allows you then to go in deep and see uh, with some good light in the hole. What you're looking for here is a screw right down the back there. I'm going to get the torch. If you see, there's a screw right in the back there. And the screwdriver needs to go onto that screw. It is very, very tight space. But by doing it this way, it avoids taking out all the center console. So I hope you can see what I'm doing there. I've got to put the torch down a second. Now here's where a magnetic screwdriver comes in handy because you can carefully pull that screw out without dropping it. And then there's the same on the other side. Again, it's a very tight spot to find a screw. Now one thing I would say is do not push hard on this plastic. It's gone very brittle over the years. So if you need to make a little bit more space, just try and push it yourself with your fingers rather than use a screwdriver to pry it. Okay. And that screw's dropped a little bit. I'll get that in a moment. Now you can see your heater display can be moved around. But you can't quite get it out at this point. But what this has enabled us to do is see the two screws on the heater controller. Can you see those in there? What I'm going to do is take some pictures for you in a minute so you can see what you're looking for. And we'll put those into the video. So now we've gained access to those screws, you can see exactly what you're getting at and the best tool to do it. I'm going to try a small screwdriver first, but that doesn't quite give me the right access. So now I'm going to swap to a larger screwdriver. Uh, but I can't see because the camera's in the way. <laughs> A 
it's not working either. We'll go back to this one. Okay, I've got the small one on it. Here's the first one. So it is a bit of a tricky job, but it's still a job you can do yourself. You just got to be patient and work your way in, finding the best tool for you and the best way. And I've dropped a screw. There we go. Now I'm going to try again with the big screwdriver on the top one. Final one over this side. Four. So that's your controller now. Down and out. And by just working it around you'll see that there's just enough gap to get that through. Now you've got those three wires still attached to this. And I think I can just about show you, they're held on the same as the other plugs with little tags on there. You might have to do this a little bit blind. Just press on the tag, pull the cable out. And put that to one side. Now at this point you can now get your display out, but one thing I want to explain to you is before trying to remove the display, make sure you get these sharp edges covered. If we can bring the camera around, you see on each side here we've got some sharp edges. And if you try to force your display out, you're going to end up scratching it. So when you get to the point where you're ready to bring this out, first of all maneuver it into a suitable position. And this is a bit of a Chinese puzzle, but you will find that there is a way of turning the display around in that confined space so that you can get it out. And it might take a few attempts, but I can assure you, you can do it. And you've got two cables on the back there. Same principle, you press in the little tag and pull on the cable. Press in the little tag and pull out the cable. And now you can bring your heater display out. No damage at all. And you're ready to send that off for repair or if this wasn't the reason you took it out in the first place, put it to one side and in part two of this video we're going to move on to full dashboard removal ready for um, making it all look like new again. Um, thanks for watching this video. Look out for part two coming soon and I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like if you've liked it. If you've got any comments, I appreciate comments. I always try to do my best to uh, get everything answered where I can. Um, and if you've got any other videos that you'd like me to do in the future, let me know and I'll add them to the list. Thanks for watching.